Israel, Israel, I'm back with part six. To the world will hate God, his word and son, Jesus Christ, and his people, Israel. So this will be the last part. And um, after this, I'm going to be dropping Death is Swallowed Up. I know I've been going for a while, a couple of days, you know what I'm saying? Um, I've just been putting together lessons, you know what I'm saying, to uh, share with y'all. So uh, I'm not going to talk much, but let's get in the lesson, though. Last time we left off, we was on... um. Let me see. Let's go to Matthew six twenty five to thirty two. Matthew six twenty five to thirty two. Matthew six twenty five to thirty to twenty two. Wait, yeah, oh thirty two. All right, and it reads as well. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. So that's right, and it's truth, Israel. We don't take thought for our life, man, because we know that the Lord God of Israel, Jesus Christ, got our back. You know what I'm saying? Even when it get hard out here, you know, the Lord, he always going to look out for his people. You know what I'm saying? Um, put your trust in him, man. He would direct all thy paths, man, all your ways. Acknowledge him first, man, before anybody, man. All right? That's what you got to do. Because at the end of the day, like I said before, the Lord is going to be the one that's going to be faithful to you, man. If you walk in this truth and you keep your faith to the end, he's going to what? He's going to be the one that's faithful. And everybody else is unfaithful to you. And you put the Lord first, he's going to be faithful to you, man. All right? Like he said, strive for the truth and the death and the Lord will fight for thee. All right? So take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink. Right? The father, uh, the father feeds the, the animals, man. He feeds the heavily, the, the birds. He feeds um all the animals, man. So you are worth more than the birds, Israel. So you know he's going to feed you, man. He's going to put raiment in your back. He's going to clothe you. Um, But you got to trust in him. You got to have faith, man. You got to have faith. That's the point. You got to have faith, Israel. Nor yet for, the, for your body, <clears throat> what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, right? And the body than raiment, right? And I was, when I was um, going over some scriptures about like, you know, disciplining your body, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, not always given to the flesh, you know what I'm saying? Like, food and stuff is given to the flesh, you know what I'm saying? These are the flesh. So, we got to eat, of course, we got to eat, you know what I'm saying? In this, uh, in this mortal body we're in, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you don't always have to eat and I have to I have to learn that on myself too. Like I have to apply that to myself too. That's why I'm starting to learn more about this these scriptures, you know what I mean? Um not always giving into the flesh of things, you know what I mean? And you know, fasting, you know what I'm saying, and prayer. You know, I need to get more into that heavily, you know. Um Behold the fowls of the of the air, for they sow not. Neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feed of them. Are ye not much better than they? Right. We are much better than the, the birds and the animals, Israel. So you know the Father won't look out for you. You know, you have to have faith. You have to trust in him. 27. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the little ones of the field, how they grow, they told not, neither do they spend. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, right? And Solomon, we know Solomon had it all, man. You know what I'm saying? The woman, the the, the money, the, 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 you know, the raiment, you know, he had it all. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like, the, like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, so if he, if the Heavenly Father clothes the grass of the field and take care of the field, he's definitely going to put raiment upon you, Israel, to keep you warm and, you know, in comfort. All right. Which today and is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Right. That's why it goes back to O ye of little faith. You know what I mean? And that's why I was talking about, like, how brothers, you know what I'm saying, charge people for lessons and stuff like that. They don't have no faith, Israel. 
You see what I'm saying? They don't have no faith in the Lord, man. The Lord will get you through to everything, no matter what you're trying to do in your life, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lord will get, if it's meant to be, it's going to happen. If it's in the Lord's will, he want to fulfill it for you. You know what I'm saying? But you, you got to have faith. You got to trust in the Lord. You know what I mean? Oh, ye of little faith. All right? Oh, uh, 32. Wherefore, if God's... Uh, it's like here. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Right? The Gentiles, they seek this stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't know the true word of the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand if they, they um, turn to the most high God of Israel, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to do that. They want to, they love uh, simplicity. They love the things of this world, the riches and the money and material things. You know what I'm saying? This stuff has become their gods, man. You know what I'm saying? And like the Lord said, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. Him that is unjust, let him still be unjust. Right? For your heavenly father know that ye have need of all these things. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? Seek the kingdom of Israel and his righteousness. His righteousness is Christ. You see what I'm saying? And all these things shall be added unto you. All right, because the book of Romans tell us everybody is, is, is seeking after their own righteousness, you know what I'm saying? Instead of the righteousness of the Lord. Right, his righteousness is Christ. Book of Romans chapter 3, verse um, 25. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation, atonement, through faith in his blood. Right? Because we know in Leviticus, the Lord um, gave us the blood, man, nah, to make atonements for our souls. So I ask you now, Messianics, how are you making an atonement for your souls if you don't believe in Christ? Or, you, like you say, you don't believe in the way uh, other people believe in Christ? All right, so how do you atone for your sins, Israel? All right, because according to Leviticus, according to uh, let's see, Leviticus 17 and 11, he says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. All right, that's why he tells us don't eat things with blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. The altar is where we take the animals, or the high priest take the animals and sacrifice for our sins. Right? So he said, I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that making an atonement for the soul. Right? That's why in Hebrews it says that without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So you non-Messianic Hebrews, man, how are you making an atonement for your sins? So Israel, I want you to stay tuned because I got a video coming up that's going to um, expose all the lies of these non-Messianic Hebrews. All right. So you need to shed blood in order to make an atonement for your soul because the life is in the blood. He gave it to us upon the altar. So how is you non-Messianics making an atonement for your soul? That means when the Lord returned to the captivity of Israel, when he comes back, the wrath of the father is still upon you. You have no cloak for your sins. All right, let's go back to Romans. And it says, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, atonement, through faith in his blood. Right. Those that believe the gospel, man. You know. Those that believe as it is written, like Christ said, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness. Then he say, seek ye the kingdom of heaven. But, ye, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is his righteousness? To declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he might be just and to justify of him which believeth in Jesus. You see, so you need to believe in Hamashiach, man. Jesus Christ in order to have an atonement for your souls, Israel. Do not be deceived by these false camps, man. All right, but let's go over here to Romans chapter 9, chapter 30. We're going to start at, what shall we say then that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained, 
to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel was followed after the law of righteousness. Like he said in Deuteronomy 6, 24 to uh, 25, it would have been our righteousness if we hearkened to the commandments, but we broke it. So therefore, the law is not our righteousness, um, how we're going to be saved. It's not going to be our righteousness, how we're going to be saved this time. We're going to be saved through the Lord's righteousness, which is Christ. But Israel, which follow after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness. Why not? Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, right? A lot of these Hebrews, majority of these Hebrews is under the veil of Moses still. They don't understand all those was a pattern of things to come, man. They don't understand because the point was not for Israel to go off the law through the stones where he wrote to Moses. It was for the Lord to put the, uh, to write the law in our hearts, man, in our minds on, on, not on, 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 uh, the physical tablets. But inside, he was going to write it inside. He's going to put his law inside. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right, but Israel which follow after the law of righteousness have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. Right, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. They ashamed the Hamashiach. The Namisian Hebrews, man, they are shamed in Christ because, you know, Christ was that chief cornerstone, man, who the builders rejected. You see, the Lord over, like I said, the lesson I'm gonna do is going is going to tie all into it, Israel. So stay tuned. It's going to destroy their lives. All right, and they out here still keeping the feast of tabernacles and you know the Passover and this and all. The Lord don't desire in uh, sacrifices, man, but obedient to his word. But like I said, stay tuned to it, Israel. All right, let's get one more. We're going to go back. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 21. Right? We're going we're gonna to be saved of his righteousness, Israel. Not ours. We couldn't do it because he didn't give us the heart to receive. We, we, well, we were carnal minded. Our conscience were, was uh, messed up. All right, the Lord is spiritual. We were carnal, the flesh and the spirit is contrary to one another. Second Corinthians 5 and 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But, you know, a lot of these Hebrews talking about, oh, nobody can take on another man's sins. But, um, so who is Isaiah 53 talking about? And then, how is it that Ezekiel, in ch Ezekiel chapter 4 and 4, Ezekiel um, took on the sins of, of Israel, man. You see what I'm saying? Because they liars, Israel. They liars, man. And it's, it's all going to be exposed in that video. Alright, so let's go back. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Right? The evidence of things not seen, right? That's why we have to, we are saved off faith, Israel. You see what I'm saying? We're not saved off our own deeds anymore, man. You got to remember, we was the ones that told the Lord in Exodus, man, that we would do all he said. All he said we would do. And then the Lord sprinkled the blood, or Moses sprinkled the blood on the, on the covenant, and the tabernacle, and us, all right, on, on, and on the book. And we enjoy it into the everlasting covenant with the creator, our God. You see what I'm saying? We couldn't keep up the end of the covenant because due to our carnal conscience. Like he said, for I knew they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. All we had to do was listen to his word, but our forefathers was rebellious and stiff-necked, just like we are today. That's why we in captivity. You see what I'm saying? Like he said, you always resist the Holy Spirit, man. You see what I'm saying? Our people is, is the same today since ancient times. We have not changed. But a lot of us is trying to change, man. Not all Hebrews is bad, Israel. You see what I'm saying? Not all Hebrews follow the same stupid doctrines as these camps. Other Hebrews is smart. You see what I'm saying? Um, evidence of hope, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things un that's not seen, right? Like he told Thomas, man, you see of me, that's why you believe me. Blessed is they that have not seen me and believe, right? Because our faith is being tried that it may be found unto praise and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, man. 
we haven't seen the Lord, but we believe. You see what I'm saying? Our faith is what's going to get us through. Right? He that is born of God overcometh the world, even our faith. You see what I'm saying? How you think the elect in Revelations, um, Revelations 12 and 11, I think it is. It was Revelations 12 and 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by faith in Christ's blood, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. You, the elect is going to be tried in the fire. The elect is not going to know they the elect. This is how you know these camps is phony, man. Because they want you to think they're the prophets whom the Lord was raising up. And then they go by, oh, we the apostles and the prophets. And we are the elect 144,000, which is lies because the elect won't know. Like he said in 2nd Edges chapter 16. All right. He said in the, um, there should be insurrection in the cities and his people being spoiled. And they should be spoiling them like madmen, sparing none. And he said they should be cast out their house and then shall be known who are my chosen. They shall be tried as gold in the fire. So those camps are liars. They want to, They want glory. They want vainglory, man. It's all vainglory. They want glory in the sit and congregation of Israel high so that the people can look at them like they something. You see what I'm saying? Instead of waiting for when Christ said, we, we shall be glorified together with him when he returns. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of lies going on in Israel. Watch out for um, wolves and sheep clothing, man. These camps are liars. They twist the scriptures. All right, the two-thirds, I spanked it to you before, the two-thirds is talking about in the land that's going to be cut off. It's not talking about that's going to be cut off in these last days, man. They twist the scriptures, Israel. Be not deceived. All right, let's go to Matthew 21 and 22. Matthew 21 and 22. In all things whatsoever ye shall ask uh, in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Right, you have to have faith and believe in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, man. There's no other name under heaven which is given among men which we must be saved by Israel. They don't know the ancient Hebrew, man. Don't believe them. Don't go into the Mesoretic text and the Seif and all that. That's false translations and stuff, man. Don't let them fool you and gas you up. Like the Lord said in Zephaniah 3 and 9, that he will restore, when he comes back, he will restore the, the uh, restore the people of pure language. Just like Christ said, I'm going to tell you my father's new name and my name when he comes back. You see what I'm saying? And uh, Revelations, I can't get the verse, but Revelations, um, I think it's 3 and 12 or 2 and 12, something like that. Let me make sure. Revelations. I think it's 3 and 12. Yeah, him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my write upon him my new name. He that have ear, he that have ear, Israel, listen, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, the which are the um the churches in Asia, man. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be careful with false prophets, Israel. The names that they telling you and going by, those names ain't going to be, you ain't going to be saved in those names, man. They're going to be calling on the name of the Lord in, in the day of trouble, in great Jacob's trouble. And the Lord ain't going to hear them because they're calling on a name that has no salvation in it, which they made up by false prophets. All right, so don't be deceived. Call upon the name of Jesus, man. Jesus is not a pagan or a, a Zeus or none of that. That's fake. All they did was... Uh, change the image of Christ, man. Just like Maccabees tell us. They ain't changed no name. Don't believe that, Israel. All right? As it is written. Remember, as it is written. All right? Not everybody's going to go as it is written because in this truth, we tend to try to go out and extend beyond the KJV. And that's where a lot of brothers error from, man. Just like uh, dude Big Judah, man, when he blasphemed the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? I had to do a video on that to expose his lies. All right, so we got to be careful going into other books. It's very important. Make sure it adds up to the words of the Lord, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, study it out before you use it. You know, don't be so quick to go into the books, Israel. All right. Now, I do believe there's other books. Yeah, it's possible because why not? Why I say that? Because in, in, uh, in uh, Second Edges,
It's something in Second Ezra's, I believe it was. I can't get it, but he talks about to Ezra's how other books, you know, what I'm saying, store them up for the ones that be wise or something like that. And I know the Book of Joshua because um that's quoted in the Book of uh, Joshua chapter thirteen and ten or ten and thirteen, and Second uh, Samuel one and eighteen, and Second Timothy three and eight. So the Book of Joshua. I believe it is in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? And you can get the book of Joshua and stuff like that. But you got to make sure these books adds up to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you understand my videos, I was never against other books. It just, I said, other books, you got to discern them. That's all. And don't be caught up. Don't extend above the KJV. You see what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of books that's out there that's not real. Okay. So we must got to understand that Israel. Make sure it adds up to the word of the Lord. All right. Test it. Test. Uh, uh, study over these books before you use them. All right. Study them first. Let's go to Matthew 21 and 22. All right. That's where I was at. All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. Right. Ye shall receive. Right. Don't doubt. Don't waver, Israel. Let's go to Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So in order to believe, you got to have faith, man. You got to, to, to get that faith, you got to hear the word of God, man. It can't just go in your ear and come out. You know what I'm saying? It can't just go boop, boop. You have to actually hear it. You know what I'm saying? You have to hear it. Like, right, let's go to Acts, Acts chapter 6 and I think it's verse 7. All right. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. They were obedient to the faith because, you know, the word. They heard the word. They believed. You know what I'm saying? Just like in, uh, what is that? Acts 17 and 11, I think it is. Yeah, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. All right, so if Paul and them or anybody came, man, these Jews, you know what I'm saying, they 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 was real well studied, man. And they was ready to go back in the scriptures, see if anything was said, is it true? And that's how you always gotta do. Go back to the scriptures. Go back if you Going into them other books or whatever you find some other books, make sure it adds up to the word of God, man. You know what I'm saying? But if possible, you know, don't use the other books. You know what I'm saying? If, if you know what I'm saying? If you're not sure, you know what I'm saying? If the Lord ain't give you the wisdom to discern, don't go into it. Don't risk it. You know what I'm saying? Don't risk it. Just stay within the, in the Lord's word, man, the Bible. You know what I'm saying? And, um, Yeah. So just be careful going into other books. That's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go to Mark 11, 22 to 24. Mark 11, 22 to 24. And Jesus answered, saith unto them. And Jesus answered, saith unto them, have faith in God. Right? Have faith in the most high Israel. Through the dark times or the bad times, have faith, man. The dark, the good times, whatever. Trust in the Lord, man, that he will be with you in the bad times and the good times and, and everything. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he shall come, uh, which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Right? He shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Right? It's without wavering, Israel. No doubt. And no, don't waver. You know what I'm saying? Trust in the Lord, man. Trust in the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Trust in the Lord. Don't waver. Don't doubt. No ifs and buts. If this is true. If, uh, should I, uh, uh, this, don't do that. Believe, believe in the Lord, man, wholehearted. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Most High. All right, faith and meekness are His delights. All right, 
And, um, you know, I, I've, I've heard these camps, man, talking about some, oh, these are the, like when Christ was um, healing people and stuff like that. And those are, it wasn't real miracles and he's not actually coming back in, in the clouds of heaven and stuff like that. You see, these are teachers, man, that's false prophets. These are liars, Israel, which Christ said was they're going to deceive a lot of us in the end times. That's why you want to be well studied in these scriptures so you can't be deceived, right? Don't look for a guide, man. Don't look for someone to teach you. Get into the word yourself, man. Get into the word yourself because there's so many false prophets out here, man. That's deceiving many. You got to test the spirits. You have the spirit of truth and the spirit of error out here. Test these spirits, man. All right. The devil is not playing. He, he His time is running down. And he's desperate, man. So he's gonna come to you as he's gonna come to you looking like righteousness, man. All right, and his minister is gonna be doing the same thing. So that's why you can't be deceived. If you study to show yourself approved, man, you can't be deceived by these devils, man. You see what I'm saying? You can't be deceived by Hashatan and his demons. All right, let's go to First Corinthians two and five. That your faith should not stand in wisdom of men. There we go. Right? Like he said, they were going to believe in doctrines and precepts of men. You know? Uh, what did he say? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Right? The wisdom of this world is foolishness unto God. Right? You, what uh, Paul said, what he said, you have to be a... Uh, you have to be a, a fool in order to, to become wise, man. Right? You have to give up this knowledge of this world, man. And, and, put, and put your mind on the wisdom of the Lord because this word is wisdom. This is wisdom. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be reborn in the word of God, man. You got to be reborn, right? And you got to have um be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know what I'm saying? Everything we've been taught, you got to forget that garbage, man. And you got to learn from the Lord. And his wisdom and word, which is Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? You have to be born again because flesh and blood is not entering the kingdom of heaven. You see, that's why he's going to give us the glorified bodies. You see what I'm saying? Our flesh and blood is not entering in that kingdom, man. All right? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Right? Don't listen to men, man. Let every man be a liar and God be true. All right? All right? God is not a, uh, God is not a man that he should lie. In the wisdom of men, but in the power of God, right? In the wisdom, the wisdom, the word. You see what I'm saying? Christ was made into us wisdom. You see what I'm saying? So you have to understand this, Israel. Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, right? You must believe that he is, Israel. As this Bible is written, as the scriptures say, you have to believe every word, man. Like I said, these brothers in these camps walking around with guns on their hips, man. They carnal, bro. They carnal, Israel. Stay away from them. Flee from them, man. They, they you know what I'm saying? Flee from them, man, because they walk around with carnal, which is the, the Bible is our sword and spirit and shield, man. You see what I'm saying? The word of God pulling down strongholds, man. Our warfare is not carnal like the Bible says, man. The carnal mind is enmity against God, man. All right? That he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. All right? And they think it's cute. You're walking around with guns on their hips trying to deceive Israel, man. Talking about some, oh, the, the, the prophets and them carry swords back in the days and sheaths and the swords. So we could carry it too. You're not the prophets, though. You're not the prophets. You see what I'm saying? You're false prophets. And you know what I'm saying? Don't believe that, man. Don't go and get a gun. Don't be like them, Israel. Be separate, man. Be separate because the Lord is going to start sorting out the false the false so-called Hebrews, man. And he's going to show it to you because, the, like the Bible says, was it in the dark eventually comes to the light. Woe unto him that um, seek deep the hottest counsel from the Lord. Because we know the Lord's eyes is 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, 
right? There's not one creature that's not manifesting in his sight that he don't see, man. All things is naked in his eyes. So they can't run forever with these stupid doctrines. They, it's going to come out, man. All right, that they were liars, that they were really liars. <laughs> All right, there's so much, man. All right. So you got diligently seek him and the Lord will reward you, Israel. Let's go to Sirach 1 and 27. Now I'm telling you, Israel, stay away from these non-Messianic Hebrews, man. They are lying to you. They are twisting the word of God, man. Do not believe them, Israel. Stay away from them. Study yourself, man. Study yourself. All right? Um... Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So, uh, Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus chapter 1, and I said 27. If thou desire wisdom, the Lord said, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall... Well, not that one. Verse 27. For the fear of the Lord is wisdom and instruction and faith and meekness. Watch this. And faith and meekness are his delight. Are his delight. You see that? Faith and meekness are his delight, Israel. That's why we got to be patient, long-suffering, man. You see what I'm saying? Humble. We got to be all of that because um, we got to wait upon the Lord, man. No matter how long it takes, you know what I'm saying? We got to wait upon the Lord and trust him. He knows what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Trust him. Wait upon him. Wait upon the Lord, man. Don't be haste because the Bible says with patience, he possess your souls, man. Because he, he don't want none of us to repent. Uh, it's like it. He don't want none of us to perish. All right. He want us to repent, man. You see what I'm saying? For our sins. All right. Like he says here. I think it's. Uh, Right, because don't forget we in a battle, with Israel. Second Ezra, uh, chapter seven, and verse fifty-six. For while we lived and committed iniquity, sin, we consider not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. Right. So it goes back to a lot of us is born in vain and vanity, man. We're born in vain, just to suffer, to punish, get punished in this life, and punished in the next life. You see what I'm saying? Then answered he me and said, "This is the condition of the battle. Therefore, we still in a war." You see what I'm saying? It's just a spiritual warfare. We are still in a battle, Israel. We're still at war. Don't get comfortable because they don't have the shackles over our feet and hands and the yoke of iron upon our neck. They gave us a fake freedom. You see what I'm saying? It's for the mind. They're after the mind and the soul now. So don't let don't don't think you're not in a battle and don't think you're not in the, your your enemy's lands, man. All right. So don't forget that. We're in a battle still, man. Just like in the days of old, but it's just we're not in a carnal battle. We're in a spiritual warfare. It's still a battle. This is the condition of the battle, which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. That if he be overcome, he shall um, suffer, as I have said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I said. All right. Second Edges chapter 9, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. You see that? It's all faith, man. That faith is his delight. It's the Lord's delight. So you got to have faith. It's right without faith, man. Even the Bible says in Romans, I can't get the scripture, but it says um, if you don't because they don't eat the, the, the fruit of faith. And it says without faith, anything without faith is sin, man. You see what I'm saying? So if you don't have faith, that is sin. You see what I'm saying? So you got to be careful, man. You got to have faith. Faith is everything. All right. Let's go to. <clears throat> let's go to Proverbs. 
11 and 28. Let me make sure it's still going. Okay. All right. Proverbs 11 and 28. Faith is everything, Israel. If you don't have faith, man, you, you're going to be in a load of trouble. you got to have faith, especially faith in Jesus' blood, man. Proverbs 11 and 28. All right, Proverbs 11 and 28. He that trusteth in his riches shall fall, right? And that's what that's what how the Gentiles are going to fall in these last days because they're going to trust in their riches. Like he said, their riches are not going to be able to save them, man, in the time of trouble, in the day of the Lord's wrath. He that trusteth in riches and his riches shall fall, but the righteous shall flourish as a branch, Right? So don't trust in money, man. Don't think about it. It's all about money and me, me, me. I need to make sure my house, this and this and this and this. Trust in the Lord, man. He's going to provide all things for you if you have faith in him, man. And you believe in his word and son, Jesus Christ, man. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. The Lord will direct your paths, man. All right, let's go to Job chapter 31. Job. Chapter 31, verse 23 to 25. For destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. Right? If I had made gold my hope, or have said to find gold that are my confidence, if I rejoiced because my wealth was great, and because my hand had gotten much. Right? So all that stuff you are not to rejoice in, and you are not to... Put your confidence in mammon, man, and wealth and, and material things, man. You want to buy of the Lord, man, that gold tried in the fire, right? That you won't be found naked, man. That's what you want to do. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 48 and 7. For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, thou shalt also be taken, and Chemus shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. Right? This is all talking about trusting in the, the treasures, man, and the wealth and the gold and the, the dollar, man, which is nothing but a piece of paper. You know what I'm saying? Trust in the Lord, man. We give it value. Trust in the Most High, and He's going to protect you, man. He's going to look out for you. Let's go to Psalm 52 and 7. Psalm 52 and 7. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength. Right. That made God not his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness, right? Because all the riches going to do when you trust in it and love money is going gonna, gonna to take you down a wicked way, man. A, a path of no return. You know what I'm saying? That's what the Lord said. Was, if a game, if, uh, what would a man profit if he gained the world and lose his soul? You know what I'm saying? Because, like he said, man, they are trusting in his riches and have not known me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these heathens, man, and even Israelites trust in their riches that don't know the Lord, man. And they're going to perish. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they put their trust and um, Israel put their trust in riches, man. And the Gentiles, they don't want to seek the God of heaven and earth. They don't want to seek the creator, the God of the Israelites. You know, you know what I'm saying? The one that made all things with his word, man. They don't want to seek the most high God of Israel. Because the Gentiles is comfortable in their wickedness. They be happy. They, are, they have darkness all around them, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how to get out to get to the light. But the gospel is that light, man. You see what I'm saying? They don't want it, though. They don't want to cleave to the Most High and His people and His covenant. You see what I'm saying? They want to trust in their riches and material things, so they're going to perish in that. All right. Let's go to Psalm 49 and 6. Psalm 49 and 6. They that trust in their wealth 
and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Right? All that, man, you, you got all that riches and what? It's not going to do nothing. You still ain't happy. When you pass on, it's still going to be here. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're going to perish. So it's like, what's the point of trusting in your riches, man? You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that the Lord allowed them to be the head and his people to tell. He let them be on top. You see what I'm saying? But he's going to reverse everything when he come back. All right. Let's go to Jeremiah 49 and 4. Jeremiah 49 and 4. Wherefore glory is thou in the valleys of thy flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, that trusteth in her treasures, saying, Who shall come unto me? Right? Israel too, man. Israel trusting in those riches. You know? We wanted to be like the, the, the Gentiles, man. Right? Which he told us, learn not the ways of the heathen. But soon as he destroyed the seven nations of Canaan's, and we got in that land, we started doing wickedness. We started setting up the images and groves like they did. That's the reason why he destroyed the Canaanites out because they were setting up images and sacrificing the devils and bringing their children through the fire. And we started bringing our children through the fire. But he just redeemed that land, gave it to us, and we just started dwelling in wickedness, man. All right, let's go to Psalm 62 and 10. That's why we got to do better, Israel. We got to be not like the heathens. We got to be separate and holy like the Lord said, man. All right? Psalm 62 and 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. You see that? Like, a lot of our people today got money and, and they just set their souls upon that. Like, oh, I'm going to trust in my money. I'm not going to trust in most. I'm not going to seek him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to rend my heart and not my garment. You know, I'm not going to pour out with weeping and mourning so that he can save me from the destruction that's coming. They trust in their riches, man. Right? And they're going to perish in their riches. You know what I'm saying? You want to seek the Lord before that time is up. Because, like I said, once the Lord set it off, man, it's over. It ain't, oh, give me another chance. Can I try? The Lord ain't sparing, man. All right? He gave us enough time. So when he finally set it off, it's over. That's why we got to get right, Israel. Let's go to 1 Timothy 6 and 17. First Timothy, uh, Timothy 6 and 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Right? The real, the real ones. You know what I'm saying? Not these fake prophets and these fake camps. They're not uh, um, elders and stuff like that. They don't deserve honor because they're lying on the most high word. All right? They don't deserve honor. Double honors, man. They false prophets and elders and teachers. That's deceiving Israel. You see what I'm saying? All right? But the true men of the Lord is out there. All right? They deserve the double honor. The the, the ones that's, you know, teaching the word of the Lord the true way. And not mixing doctrines and uh, lying on the words of the Lord, man. Twisting scriptures to fit their, their, uh, their uneducated doctrines. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> they the, and they, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, right? The ones that's really studying to show they self-approve, not just making a video with two or three scriptures talking about a topic and that's it, but actually diving into the word and creating lessons to edify the people of Israel. Those people, test them by their fruits, Israel. You will find them because it's a lot out there. Not everybody, not everybody is from the camp. All right, there's other brothers out there that's on their own and teaching in their own, uh, uh, you know, doing it in their own, you know what I'm saying, teaching it the true way. You just have to discern, you have to test the spirits, 
you know, and ask the Lord to bring you, um, guide you to that person. All right. So let's go to, uh, let's jump over to verse 10. Well reported of for good works. If she had brought up children, if she had lodged strangers, if she had washed the saints feet, if she had relieved the afflicted, if she had diligently followed every good work. All right. Right, so just like a like a, a a woman, man, you know what I'm saying? The woman today, they hard headed, man. Israelite women is hard headed. The Lord said for a woman not to teach, but you look on YouTube, you see women teaching like crazy. That's disobeying the words of the Lord, man. He said, "Don't." He said, "The woman learn in silence, man." He said, "The only way the woman is saved through childbearing and faith, man. If she continue in faith and childbearing." Why? Because the woman was deceived by the serpent, not Adam. Adam followed her. Therefore, he was a part in the transgression. But it was really through the woman that got deceived by the serpent. And that's why we in this mess. You see what I'm saying? This is why I know the women are like, oh, you a chauvinist and all this. No, it's the truth. And the Lord is going to show you the truth when he come back since you don't want to listen to his scriptures. You want to be equal with a man instead of being and playing your role. You see what I'm saying? So you want to disobey the Lord's word and make videos to try to edify Israel and, you know, warn, uh, ignore people that's, that warns you and tell you, stop making videos and teaching Israel. You knock off the comments, you know what I'm saying? Block them and stuff like that. That just shows you the women is destroyed Israel. Do you see it now? The women is destroyed. The devil deceived the woman, man. You see what I'm saying? It's nothing new under the sun. It's, he may have made them think they're equal with men and they could do everything a man do. Right? But soon as you soon as a man is time to get down like a man, they're the first one calling the cops on you and doing this. You see what I'm saying? I thought you could foot in the man's shoe. They play the woman role then and then the courts and all that. You see, it's just it's deception, man. It's deception. Satan deceived the woman, man. Alright. So just be careful, Israel. Be careful. Let's go to Matthew 6 and 24. But the woman is going to learn, man, when the Lord comes back. You know what I'm saying? The ones that, but, but to you women that's, because I know not all you are stiff neck and rebellious like that, but to you women that's, you know, listening to the word of the Lord, man, you virtuous woman, and, you know, if you have a husband and you, you, you know, submitting yourself unto him and you walking in his truth, man, you know what I'm saying? I pray that the Lord continue to keep your spirit strong and keep going. To the end. You know what I'm saying? So. Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters. For he will either hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold, the, hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Right. Like he said. You know, once you cleave yourself to you, you are that uh, servant to that to that one man. But Israel, we are the Lord's servant, man. Christ has set us free, right? We are His servants. Like Paul said, He's a prisoner to Christ. We are prisoners to Christ, right? He has redeemed us, and we are His. You see what I'm saying? So He rules over us, our God, man. Let's go to Proverbs. Hmm. Let's go back to Proverbs 23 and 23. Proverbs 23 and 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding, right? All right. So, the truth, we know the word is the truth. All right. The word is the truth. Like I said, these devils going to pay for, um, for, for making gain off the word of the Lord, man. All right. The scriptures were given to Israel, but these devils take everything and they're going to pay for it, man. So, we are not to sell his word, man. 
We ought to buy the truth and sell it not, man. We ought to keep the word of the Lord and teach the sheep of Israel. He said to Peter and them, um, freely, give and freely give. All right. But in Israel, it's all about me, 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 me. You know what I'm saying? The Lord said, bear ye one another's burdens, man. One for we all for We here to lift each other um, up, you know. He said, encourage one another with the scriptures. That's what we got to do. But Israel just think it's all about self. You know what I'm saying? All right. So we know the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and tremble. But everything in context, you got to understand context. Yes, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. But we are the body of Christ. We are to suffer with one another. During our walk in our, our own salvation with fear and trembling in Israel. Don't forget that Christ said to love one another. If you're walking around in this truth, you don't love one another. You're doing it all for nothing. Because that means you hate the most high if you can't love your brother. All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. All right. And that's murder, man. You know, if you hate your brother, that's considered murder in the Bible. And what he said, no murder have eternal life abiding in him. So you can't forget when you're in this walk to love your people, man. Don't forget that, Israel. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, right? Like he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Which man's wisdom teacheth is foolishness unto God, Right? He could use the simple things of the of the world to he could use the simple things to confound the world, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Right, like he said, the natural man can't understand the things of the Spirit of the Lord, man, for they are foolishness unto him. You see what I'm saying? Like they can understand because they're spiritually discerned, Israel. Remember, you have to become a fool to become wise. Let's go to Matthew 10, verse 5 through 8. Matthew 10, verse 5 through 8. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the ways of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, and to ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right, because the kingdom is given to the Israelites. It's not given to all people. All right. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. Freely ye have received, freely give. Christ wasn't going around charging the, the Israelites for, for a teaching. All right. He was giving it to them freely. That bread, that true bread, which is himself that came down from heaven. The, the living waters, which is him. Okay. He was feeding his sheep, man, freely, not charging them for a video, all right, and and, and charging them for lessons and stuff, and, and oh, you, you can see this if you give me this, if you, come on, brother, all brothers out there that's doing that, man, need to be ashamed of themselves, man, we do this work of the Lord for free, man, because we hope that our reward is in the kingdom, we don't look for and store up our treasures down here, we store them up in the, for the kingdom, Israel, all right? Five to eight, right. All right, so the Lord, man, like I said, the kingdom is for the Israelites. It's not for anybody else but Israel. Like I said, the heathens that cleave to the most high, the ones he poured his spirit upon is going to get it. They're going to get it. The promises was given to Abraham. To be given to Isaac, to Jacob, all right? Those promises the Lord going to fulfill to Israel. It was all the, pro the covenant of promises was given to the Israelites. Not anybody besides Israel, all right? But the Gentiles that um, cleave to the Israelites, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to bring them to the kingdom. Verse 13, go and ye shall, matter of fact, let's start at uh, 
10. Thus saith the Lord unto Ezra, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would give, have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take under me and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them, for the Israelites. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savior. They shall neither labor nor be weary. It's all promises to Israel. All right. Go and ye shall receive pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. All right. Or watch. Take heaven and earth to witness for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good. For I live, save the Lord. Right here, he destroyed the works of the of the spiritual powers, man, that's in high places. Like he said in uh, Isaiah, I have uh, broken the staff of the wicked and the power of the rulers. All right. I have broken evil in peace and created the good for I live, say of the Lord. So the kingdom is giving to the Israelites. It's not given to nobody but Israel. Now he have called Gentiles to the kingdom, right? When they cleave to the Lord. But the kingdom is for the Israelites. Let me see. Alright, so the kingdom is for the 12 tribes of Israel. Alright. Like he said, um, also, um, repeating them Acts, Christ, he said, Now would thou restore the kingdom unto Israel, right? Because they was looking for Christ to restore the kingdom uh, for Israel because the Roman Empire, seizing them, had controlled over Jerusalem at that time, but Christ came to only fulfill the things that was written by him in the Psalms and the prophets at that time. Right? Like he said, unto John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is taking by force. So when he Lord come back, he's going to take that kingdom back, man. He's going to give us the, uh, Jerusalem. It's already been given to us, man. You see what I'm saying? We just have to wait and be patient, Israel. That's what we got to do. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy. We want Deuteronomy 28, verse 43 to 44. The stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. You see? Thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. And you see that today. You see what I'm saying? The heathen is still on the head today, man, because the Lord ain't returned our captivity yet. You see what I'm saying? Because like he said here, he said in our second measures, chapter six and verse 19, and we'll begin to make inquisition of them, what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness. And when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled, right? A lot of Hebrews say it's the 400 years thing. I, I don't get into that, but. Um, is a, is a time limit with a Lord set of Israel's infliction. You see what I'm saying? That's why this Bible says no man knows the day or the hour of Christ's return, man. Nobody. So you can't say it's a 400 year prophecy that's putting a set time and date on the return of the Mashiach. And nobody knows the time, day, or the hour, man. So always keep that in remember, Israel. Um, so they're the head, man. The heathen's still the head today. He made them the head and his people to tell. Right? We got to go to them for one of all things. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Let's jump over to 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Right? He turned our heaven into brass, man. We was on top. You see what I'm saying? We was living in the, the glory and you know, over the nations and stuff. You know what I'm saying? 
But he turned out heaven into brass, man. This is why this is the Gentiles' kingdom, man. Because in the next kingdom, they're going into captivity. You see what I'm saying? He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He, he that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. All they that devour thee shall be devoured. And every one of them shall go into captivity. And they shall take them captives who captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord is going to reverse everything back to his normal place. Because Satan turned everything right side up. You got to turn everything back to his normal position to see the truth in this world, Israel. In this matrix we live in. Alright, let's go to... Let's go to Leviticus 26 and 19. Leviticus 26 and verse 19 and I will break the pride of your power and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass you see that because when we walk in the ways of the Gentiles we walk in pride Israel the Bible tells us pride is not of the father man pride and arrogance and all that that's of Satan man that's of this world and that's the, what the Gentiles walk in you know I'm not going to say every Gentile because the Lord like I say he poured out his spirit upon some Gentiles to get it Right? It's the handmaids and servants. So, but the majority of the world, the heathen walk in pride, man, and arrogance. That's why he said, when you come back, and I will punish the world for their evil. Right? He's going, he said, I will um, cause the arrogance of the proud to cease to stop. You see what I'm saying? But they're not going to see it now until the Lord return with judgment and punishment upon them. Let's go to uh, John 16 and 33. They're only going to know when the Lord bring that judgment. They're not going to know. They're not going to believe it right now. But they're going to believe it when when, uh, when he's actually performing it, man. You see what I'm saying? And it's going to be through punishment. You see what I'm saying? John 16 and 33. All right. These things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace as well. In the world, ye shall have tribulation, right? We're going to go through it, man. That's the point we're being uh, tried as gold in the fire. We have to, like the Bible says, we have to go through much tribulation to enter the kingdom, man. All right? Shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world, right? He have overcome this world. He testifies and know that the works of the world are evil, Israel. That's why the world is going to hate us. The world is going to hate the Most High, His Word, His Son, Jesus Christ, and His people, Israel, because we're walking in Christ. And we're not running as the same ex as riot as the Gentiles. When we come into the truth, we stop doing no stuff. You see what I'm saying? We're trying to walk in righteousness and get back to our God. And they're going to think it's strange. Like, you know, you're doing these things. Your friends, you know, you might have some friends, some Gentile friends, and you, you know, stop messing with them because you came into this truth. And they're going to look at you weird. But that's fine. That means you're doing something right and keep on that path. It's real. Don't give up. Don't waver. Don't doubt. Keep going. Trust in your God, man. He got your back. All right, let's go to uh, Acts 14 and 22. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them and exhorting them to continue in the faith, right? Continue in the faith, giving them the words of encouragement and that we must do much tribulation into, into the kingdom of God. You see what I'm saying? We got to be tried in this fire to be refined so we can enter the kingdom, Israel. You're not going to have a smooth and bumpy ride in your life, man. And think you're going to get to the kingdom. You're going to go through hardship, tribulation, and all that. You know what I'm saying? That's why Paul said, uh, um, there's, uh, uh, we are more than conquerors. I'm persuaded that neither death, nor angels, nor principality, nor height, nor death, anything can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ, man. You see what I'm saying? So... Just, just be, just be of good cheer, man. Be of good comfort. You know what I'm saying? Be of good comfort. You know what I'm saying? Be of good comfort, Israel. Let's go to First John five and four. First John five and four. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So our faith, Israel, is how we're gonna overcome this world. You see what I'm saying? If we are born of God, like the Bible says, um, our spirit bear witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God, meaning this word. And if we are the sons of God, then 
whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, even our faith. So it's all going to be shown who of the most high in that time, you see what I'm saying, in these times, as we continue to grow in his truth. You see what I'm saying? Um, Let's go to Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus chapter 2. All right, let's start chapter 2. He says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Right? You're going to go through all type of stuff, Israel. All right? You're going to have the devil and his demons coming after you, man. The Gentiles, your own family and loved ones coming after you. But you got to prepare your soul for temptation. Meaning, build yourself up in his word and wisdom, man, which is the most high God of Israel, Jesus Christ. And build up your foundation, man. You want to set your house upon that rock. When the waves come, it's not going to knock it over, man. You don't want to set your house upon sand where the waves is going to destroy it. You want to set your foundation and your strength and your spirit on that house, on that rock, so you can stand firm anything that comes your way, man. You take it all. You embrace it. That's why the Bible says, you know, we rejoice through tribulations and hardships, man, that's brought upon us. You know what I'm saying? We, we enjoy it. Like you said, don't think it's something new that cometh upon you. It's nothing new, man. Embrace it and uh, laugh at it. All the stuff that come your way. Turn that negative into positive, man. With, with the devil in them and the world try to come upon you, put the weight upon your shoulders. You show them through love. You know what I'm saying? Long suffering, patience. You walk in the fruit of the spirit, man. You see what I'm saying? You defeat them with the word of God, Israel. All right. Set thy heart of right and constantly endure, right? Constantly endure what comes upon you. Don't be quick to find an exit, all right? And make not haste in time of trouble, right? Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end, right? That's why the Bible says our work is not in vain. Don't think it is. Hold fast your confidence to the end, Israel. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate, right? Okay, because there's going to be some days where you might not have money or some food, you know what I'm saying? I can't wash your clothes or something or anything, man. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be prepared to, to, to embrace it and endure that, you know what I'm saying? And know that the Lord is going to find a way for you. You know what I'm saying? He, he got you. He already know what you want. You're being tried. You're being tried in that fire, Israel. Because all of it is going to be found. What? All of it is going to be found... When the Lord come back, it's going to be found unto him as 1 Peter 1, verse 5. We're going to start at who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready be, to be revealed in the last time. Verse 6, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Right, temptations. Right? Temptation comes in any form, not just sexual lust and all that. Watch this, verse 7, that the trial of your faith is about your faith being tried, Israel. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. Your faith in the Lord, Israel, is much more precious than gold, Israel. That perisheth, though it be tried with what fire might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen, we haven't seen this generation have, of Israel have seen Christ. Whom having not seen, ye love. We love him because we trust in his word, man. We, we find out the will of God, man. We go, and, and part of the will of God is believing on Christ. And whom though now ye see him not, we don't see Christ right now, right? But we know he's in us because we are his temple. This, this is where the Lord, uh, the spirit of the Lord is, man. God and the Holy Spirit dwells in us. That's why we have to stay away from fornication because the Lord will destroy um, us if we destroy his temple, which we are. Yet believing, right, we see him not, but we believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the, verse 9, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvations of your souls, Israel. Verse 10, of which salvation the prophets inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you. You see what I'm saying?
Verse 11, searching what or what men of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. All right. So there's things that even the angels, man. And certain prophets didn't know, but he had given it, you know what I'm saying, to to those that seek him, you know what I'm saying, the ones he wanted to give it to. But thing, there's things angels don't know about, man. They're desiring to look into things of the Lord, what he's doing, you know what I'm saying? So we, we got to understand, man, he reveals all his stuff to Israel, man. You see what I'm saying? He revealed his, his secrets and things to Israel that he wanted to do because we are his chosen people. You see what I'm saying? Um, verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon you, take cheerfully and be patient, Israel, when thou art changed to a low estate. Right? Because that's when the devil is going to come after you when you're at your rock bottom. And you got to be able to come overcome it. You see what I'm saying? You got to be able to defeat him. Resist the devil. He should flee from you. You're going to be vulnerable in that time. But if you, you, you trust the spirit of the Lord, you trust the Lord, man, he's going to allow you to overcome all things that's going to be thrown at you. You just have to trust him, Israel. All right. Verse five, for gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, right? Hardship. Uh, believe in him and he will help thee order thy way right and trust in him. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generations of old and see that any ever trust in the Lord and was confounded. None of them was. Or did, it, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Nope. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? None. All the prophets and, and apostles and stuff, they believed in the Lord, man. All right. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering, very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. All right. Woe be to the faithful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be uh, defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? So when you gave up your truth, your, your faith, Israel, what you going to do when the Lord visits you, man? What are you going to say? It was too hard for me. I couldn't hold out. You know what I'm saying? That's why you got to build your spirit up, man. Build your your mind and everything up so you can withstand stuff that come upon your life, especially the great tribulation that's coming. You know what I'm saying? If you're blessed to be here, if the Lord allow you to be here, you know what I'm saying? Like he said, uh, war, war uh, to them that is not here, you know what I'm saying? But more, much more war to them that is here. But at least uh, if you're here, man, you're going to see the wonders and stuff and you keep your faith, you're going to be saved by the Lord, man. Even though you're going to see and go through all this stuff in these end times if you're blessed to be here. But you want to be here to see this stuff. You know what I mean? So it's up to the Lord though. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word. Right. And they that love him will keep his ways. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. You see what I'm saying? It's the law and the inward man. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. Saying we will fall into the hands of the Lord. And not into the hands of men, for as his majesty is, so is his mercy, right? And in, in the book of Maccabees, it tells us that the Lord's mercy never will depart from Israel. But no matter how long must the Lord be mad at us, man, he always come back to us and return our captivity, man. You see what I'm saying? Um, Where were we? All right, let's go to Romans 5 and 3. Romans 5 and 3. We almost out of here. Romans 5 and 3, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation, also knowing that tribulation work of patience, right? That more tribulation, man, you become, you get that experience, you become more patient and long suffering in situations because you've been in those situations. So you now know how it is and you know how to get through it. You know what I mean? Let's go to Luke 21 and 19. Luke 21 and 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. So the Lord said, in your patience, ye possess your souls, Israel. All right. 
With your patience, you possess your soul. Remember, patience is key in long suffering as well. Let me see. All right. So let me speed this up. Let's go to Second Corinthians twelve and ten. Second Corinthians twelve and ten. Second Corinthians twelve and ten. Uh, let me see. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Right. When we are weak, then we are strong, Israel. So we take uh, pleasure in all the infirmities and tribulations that come upon us. We overcome it, Israel. All right, let's go to James 1 and 2. James 1 and 2. <clears throat> my, my brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse, many temptations. All right, so count it all joy, whatever comes upon you, Israel. Take it joyfully and cheerfully. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 12. 1 Peter. 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. All right, verse 13. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. When we go through this stuff, we are partakers in Christ's suffering. That's why the Bible says, we are baptized in Christ. We have put on Christ. You see what I'm saying? We've been baptized into his death. Right? That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Right? We shall see him as he is. You see what I'm saying? And we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Right? And if he be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Uh, for the spirit and the glory of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. You see what I'm saying? Just like they, like the Bible says, no man that has the spirit of the Lord can call Jesus accursed. You see, but these Hebrew camps going around talking about Jesus ain't the name and this and this and all of that because they don't have the spirit of the Lord, man. You see what I'm saying? These are doctrines of men they created to deceive your mind, Israel. Let's go to 1 Peter 1, verse 6. Uh... Matter of fact, let's go to Second Ezra, chapter sixteen and seventy-three. Then shall be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as gold, as the gold in the fire. Right? Then they're going to be known who are the elect of the Lord, who are His chosen. You see what I'm saying? They're going to be tried. They're not going to know the, the elect. This is how you know these camps and false prophets are liars. And all these GMS and all of them is liars. Because the elect don't know who they are. They're going to be tried. That's the point of being a tribe. If they know who they are, what's the point? You see what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says we say by hope. If a man hope, why do he yet hope if he see it? Right? If he see it, why do he yet hope for? So if we hope, we wait for it with patience. You see what I'm saying? They lying to you, Israel. Don't focus on who the elect is. Focus as your Hebrew is like trying to make it. That's it. Let's go to 2 Maccabees 6 and 12. Second Maccabees 6 and 12. Now beseech those that read this book, that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not for, um, to be for our destruction. All this is not for our destruction, Israel. But for a chastening of our nation because we broke the creator's law. We broke our God's law. So now he's punishing us. He's sending the sword to avenge the core of his covenant. He made us a waste and a reaper and a curse among the heathen. But he's going to be one with us again. All right. And all the nations is going to see the glory of the Lord rest upon Israel. That's why he said, and I shall be glorified in you in the sight of many nations. They're going to know we are his witnesses. Like he said, ye are my witnesses. There is no God beside me. He's going to do some signs and wonders. In these last days and things that's in endings and effects that's going to blow the world mind when they find out who we truly are, Israel. Let's go to Hebrews 12 and 7. Hebrews. Hebrews 12 and 7. If ye endure chastening, right, God dealeth with you as with sons, right? 
For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Right? The father dealeth with us like a father do his son Israel. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8 and 5. Deuteronomy 8 and 5. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that it, that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Right? He dealeth with Israel like a father do his sons. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 127 to 31. Second Ezra 1 verse 27 to 31. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, the Lord said, but your own self, saith the Lord. Thus said the, the Lord, the Almighty Lord, have I not prayed you as a father his sons, and as a mother her daughters, and a nurse her young babes, that ye will be my people, and I shall be your God, that ye should be my children, and I shall be your father? I gather you together as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings. But now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out of my face. When you offer unto me, I will turn my face from you, from your solemn feast days, your new moons, and your circumcisions have I forsaken. But they still teaching our people to be under the uh, worldly stuff that we was in in the, in the uh, first covenant, right? The things that was made by man's hands, which was the figure of things to come, right? Which was a, um, an image of things to come, right? Because Christ was the true image of things, all right? So they tell teachers, keep the Feast of Tabernacles and stuff like that, <clears throat> You see what I'm saying? But they still got that veil of Moses lifted upon them. But like the Bible says, it is lifted through Christ, only through Christ. Let's go to, to get this last verse. Let's go to Amos 5 verse 21. And then we out of here, Israel. Amos 5 verse 21 to 23. I hate, I despise your feast days. You hear that, Israel? And I will not smell in your solemn, your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. Right? And then when you look in these camps, man, they're going around singing to the Lord and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and all of this and, and talking about keep the Feast of Tabernacles, which the Lord just said he hates our feast days and stuff like that. So therefore, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like the Lord said, you know, within yourself, he said, sing, uh, uh, praise the Lord with songs, you know, within your, into yourself, so him songs to the Lord, you know what I'm saying? But they do things in a different way. Uh, still under the veil of Moses because they don't want to let it be lifted off through Christ. They don't want Christ to set them free. All right. So on that note, this is the last part of this one, Israel. And uh, the next video I'm dropping is going to be Death is Swallowed Up. And um, I'm going to continue with that. We're just going to go through that and gain some understanding, hopefully. You know what I'm saying? And, and hopefully I get edified in that. So on that note, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. The great I am that I am, the one that sit on the throne of truth, justice, righteousness, and holiness, and his wisdom, word, and son, Jesus Christ, who was made flesh to die for the nation of Israel's sins, who is the Most High, and the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of truth. Like I said, Israel keeps seeking the truth and you Gentiles keep seeking the truth and cleave to an Israelite to learn the most high, uh, who the most high is and um, to learn the truth. All right. So on that note, I say Shalom.